This week on The Breakdown, we hear from former Wallaby Rod Kafer about why he thinks the Aussie super teams can foot it with the Kiwi sides. Cody Taylor beams in after the Crusaders secured the inaugural Super Rugby Aotearoa title. And former Blues player Matt Johnson tells us about his incredibly inspiring journey back from the brink of death. Kia ora, hello and welcome to the breakdown. Yes, we have our first Super Rugby Aotearoa champion. It was the Crusaders once again who found their way to the top of the mountain, not after the Highlanders threw everything they possibly could at the weekend. Now the Crusaders come north next Sunday to take on the Blues at a full chocolate sold out already Eden Park, which means JK, the title travels. It's like a heavyweight tussle. This one, it goes on the line, right? Is that what you're thinking? Last try wins. It's always been a New Zealand way of doing things. <laughs> Always. You said that seven Always. days ago. We were hopeful, Mills, that possibly the Highlanders could get up, but reality was they were too good once again. An outstanding performance, full house in Christchurch. Afternoon, sun was shining. They fronted, but it still sets up for me a bit of a heavyweight tussle come Sunday. Oh, absolutely. And, and you've got to think, too, I mean, the, the standards they set down in, in Christchurch coming up here, they'll want to finish off this season on a good note. Yes, I know they've won. Um, but again, they want to come up here at a packed house, 40 odd thousand people at Eden Park and get the W. JK, I've got to say to you, look, the Hurricanes won on the weekend as well. So if you think about the Hurricanes travel to Dunedin to take on the Highlanders, if they were to win, which of course, quite possibly they could the way they're playing. The Highlanders, though, playing some brilliant rugby. But we could have three teams end up with six wins and two losses. Now, that is some sort of competition. Yeah, and you've got to take your, you know, your hat off to the Crusaders. Unbelievable performance. The Highlanders were very, very good. Yeah. You know, if, if Aaron Smith scores that try where he kicked over the top, everything could have changed. But they've just continued to do it. So, you know, hats off to them. But it is a final this week in every sense, and also down at the Highlanders. This is about pride. This is honestly... I was talking to my Italian friend, and, I, and he rang me and said, J.K., I've never seen rugby like this. And it's just amazing standard of football that we should celebrate. And for the Crusaders to win it again, that's an incredible achievement. As much as it hurts me to say <laughs> it. And it is finals this week. Because it is a final. We're New Zealanders. We don't, we don't think about the trophy. I think Razor will probably do a, a things a bit different. Mills will give them a few days off, change it up completely to keep them motivated now that they've won it. And the Blues will be waiting with 44,000 supporters. It's, it's special. Oh, there'll be the odd Crusaders fan there. I'm sure. No, we're not Crap. selling them any tickets. You're not selling them tickets. That's, uh, that's how it rolls up here in Auckland. Let's talk about our moments from the weekend. And I'm sort of looking forward with mine because I think we've got two of the best performers in the game right now in Geordie Barrett and Richie Mawanga. For me, I tell you what, I'm going to throw this out there that I think their performances uh, this weekend and now going into the last weekend, for me, will decide who is the most valuable player in Super Rugby Aotearoa this season because the return of Geordie Barrett transformed the Hurricanes. Richie Mawanga has been an irresistible form for the Crusaders and a huge part of the reason they are the defending or the champions of this competition. I think this is something, Mills, that I can put my hat on that these two players will scrap it out on the last weekend. So what happens if Richie doesn't play this week? And it wins by default. Geordie Barrett. <laughs> <laughs> You're in civil. Well, Richie, you, be, you better be playing. You better be playing. You better be here. Take up the challenge. I know you'll walk into Razor's office and you'll want it. JK, for you. Yeah, mine was actually Razor not dancing. I don't know why. I was watching the game um, from home and I thought, I hope you don't dance, mate. I don't know why. Um, and I think it was a great choice because, like he mentioned afterwards, about the team and about them celebrating it. So, you know, I think it showed good maturity and, and good empathy. And uh, so I thought it was a good call by him. I thought it was the right call at the right time, whether he breaks it out this way. Because he, he is a loose forward that probably thinks like a winger. A frustrated <laughs> loose forward who wanted to be a winger, maybe. Could play, though. Could oh, yeah. play. Mills, for you? Well, for me, it's, it's got nothing to do with the Super Rugby. I know that's been fantastic, Aotearoa. But really, it's the traditions. The Land Rover, first 15, 1A in Auckland. And how, look at this. I mean, I was watching this at the uh, hotel before the Hurricanes game and just seeing the pride and, uh, on these guys' faces doing their haka. Uh, for the school kings and grammar and also the talent on display afterwards guys you guys would have seen this game as well and the finish of it man how oh, good how good was the last 20 minutes 
Like, I thought it was all over, but Auckland Grammar showed just great, I don't know, what you call it, composure under pressure, and, and I thought it was just a great game of rugby. Most weekends, every weekend I've seen, there's been some fantastic, mm. fantastic contests. Bernie, for you, your moment from the weekend. Oh, the Crusaders game, it was sensational, wasn't it? Uh, Bryn Hall, he was pretty sure he'd already had five points on the board. He was applying the afterburners until he did not. <laughs> oh. Josh Mackay with the most, more toe than a Roman sandal. You want to see the speed of this guy. He mowed Bryn Hall down and saved the try. It was unbelievable. And was it just coincidence that Bryn Hall uh, had a quick sub straight after that? Bernie, it can happen to anyone. <laughs> it can happen oh. to anyone. <laughs> yeah, that was an ouch moment for sure. So another year of Crusaders dominance, another year of watching Canterbury fans celebrate, but... It was a super rugby Aotearoa final without the break dancing, As you said, JK, why? Well, Scott Robertson spoke with us after the match and explained that he didn't feel it was the right time. It didn't feel quite right. They do have a game to play, remember. He said they would be uh, a victory celebration with curfews. So we'll check in with Cody Taylor about that very shortly. He also said that Ollie Yeager's injury, uh, that put a worrying cloud on events. There will be time for dancing, said Razor Robertson. And you know that's the Sunday after the other final, eh, JK? The other final. Right? No, the real final. The real one. Which is a sellout, by the way. Eden Park showing that there's life in the old girl yet. And that the Blues fans, they've been loyal to the bitter, bitter end. Capacity at the park between the Blues and the Crusaders, just over 43,000. Coverage from three live on Sky. A fitting end, don't you think, to a tournament which already has its champion, the Blues, closing out their season the way they opened it at home in front of a full house. And just to give you a little bit of perspective and context, Sunday's sellout means that the Blues have had just under 100 150,000 fans through the gates for their four home matches, which my school, CMaths, tells me that averages about 37,000 per game. And that's double the average attendance of last year. Pretty cool. And those gate sales, they will be a huge blessing for the Blues franchise, which was facing the possibility of insolvency amid the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, record crowds flocking to Eden Park. It's really staved off the imminent hibernation of sorts from the club. And they weren't alone, were they? All the franchises feeling the squeeze when Super Rugby was put on ice. And no one knows better about the feeling of being put on ice than the poor old Chiefs. But could a couple of superstar internationals be the adrenaline shot the franchise needs. Well, English club Saracens, they'll be relegated next season due to salary cap breaches. And there is the potential to loan big name players like Owen Farrell and Maro Itoje to the Chiefs. So Saracens director of rugby, Mark McCall, says, I don't think it's out of the question. And he's even said he's spoken directly with Gats, who McCall says is very happy with the situation. I wonder if some of the Chiefs locks in first fives would be very happy with that. Interesting times. This may build legs as the week progresses and as a little bit of chat starts on possible internationals coming. What do you reckon? Have we got room for internationals? Is that, is that music to you guys' ears? I don't know nah, about it. Uh, I'm not check, sure. Uh, Bills, you? Oh, I'd love to see that happen. Of course. <laughs> of course I would, would absolutely love to see that happen. I think it's great to see players of that calibre come down here to New Zealand because I know, and Bernie's just mentioned before, you know, would there be... You know, any guys that would be unhappy, I don't think there would be. I think they would, it, that's what Kiwis are like. We're challenged by, you know, guys like this coming down here and actually bringing that competition. I'd love to see it happen. The frown, if it doesn't... The frown's hey, on. The frown's on over here. Put them in the Pacific Island team. Yes, <laughs> Millsy. Hey, I'm with you. <laughs> no, for me, it's uh, like, how are we going to afford it? So they're, not, they're just using us... Right, because if we were going to say we're making a premium competition and they can stay, but Farrell's on 1.2 million pounds, Millsy. What if gonna... Saracens are playing, are paying, and they want them to play? What if the line? Well, that's right. Are they're playing? using us, right? So I'm a little bit undecided about it. And who says they should go to the Chiefs? <laughs> like it should be. It should be oh, okay. No, no, but seriously, okay. it should be like uh, like they do at the NBA. So it should typical. be a... the stronger getting. And the second, strong. The, and the last stronger thing. Stronger getting strong. The, the Blues coach, former Blues coach, talking more and more like a crusader all the time. Eh? <laughs> hey? the stronger That's... getting strong. No, listen. And the other thing is, just for a tip for them, Cannavaro, when Juventus got banned in the Italian Serie A, he went to Real Madrid. I've hated him ever since. If your team goes to second division, hang in. Hang tough. <laughs> hang tough, well, man. Someone who's had to hang tough over the last Zealand. couple of days is Cody Taylor, who's the captain of the Crusaders, because I'm sure it's celebration time, Cody. A little bit of recovery from the game, and I'm sure the team has celebrated. How did you, I suppose, together look at the weekend's victory and celebrate it as a side? Um, hey, guys. Yeah, no, it was a um, pretty special moment for us uh, as a team to be at home. 
uh, especially with our fans and, and the result that we had there the game before that. Um, but uh, no, it was a great opportunity to, to connect back with our family. Uh, you know, once we sort of went in the sheds, we got in there with our families. They all came in and um, headed over to Twiggers and had a feed and a couple of beers and um, celebrated accordingly. But no, nothing too crazy given that uh, we know the, the challenge coming this week. So. Cody, look, there's been some news coming out just in recent times, the fact that there's been maybe a little bit of some collateral damage to the trophy <laughs> from the weekend. <laughs> Usually you put, though, the, who, the young fellas get the responsibility, don't they? Who, who's, who was the responsibility oh, in your team, whether it's a young prop or a younger fella? Who was supposed to be looking after it? No, that's probably the issue. We actually didn't have one designated person. Um, but, uh, yeah... By the sounds of things, it's gone. But he's fallen over a couple of times during Uber Uber rides or whatever. But um, it's in safe hands now. It's um, getting repaired, so that's a good thing. <laughs> no, the, for me, uh, has this been a little bit different? Has this been a special, a special one just because of the level of the competition and the level of the opposition? I mean, is that in your thoughts? This has to be one of the best competitions we've seen. Oh, for sure. Like it's it's been a challenge every week. Like I'm not saying that normal Super Rugby isn't, but just when you know when you're going up against a New Zealand team, how much uh, hostility there is because your mates off the field. Um, it's it's bloody tough, and uh, we're expecting much of the same this week. Uh, you know, there's a lot of hype around it meaning nothing for us, and and how much it means to the Blues. So there's going to be a bit of heat there. And it's going to be a bloody tough game. So. I'm actually really excited for the challenge. So, Cody, every year, every year, like these last what three or four years since she's won this championship, we sit sit here and we ask, how do you do it? You know, how do you do it? Is, do you have a template that you change constantly all the time in terms of your game plan, or is it have you just stuck to the same thing every time? Oh, there's uh, from I suppose the first one in 2017 to now. There's Things that you've you know that are in set in place that that won't change and, and that's probably from going from the legacy before even uh, 2017. But um, no, I think just the way Razor um, drives the culture of the group and and um, you know the coaching staff and it goes goes deeper than that even just the management and behind the scenes uh, how much work they do for us as players and then for us having to front up on the field it makes it that much easier we can just focus on footy. And um, you know, get all those moves right and and put it out there on the field. But um, yeah, it hasn't been easy this this time round with this competition. You talk about it though. We, we, normally, you finish Super Rugby a good six or eight weeks ago. After this, the success of it, the fan engagement. If you look at this competition, would you have the appetite maybe coming in fresh in 2021 and giving this one more go? The fact that if you had a couple of months off and you're ready and primed for another round of it, is it something that might excite you? Oh, I wouldn't say no. Like it, it brings the best out of um, us as New Zealand players. You know, you're seeing people stand up. You're seeing superstars go to another level. I know you talked around Geordie Barrett coming back and playing unreal. You've seen Richie, um, Aaron Smith found a new lease of life in terms of his performance on the field. You know, he's taken his game to a whole other um, level. And I think if that's what you're going to get from a competition like this, then why not? Um, it does take its toll on your body, but. At the same time, it's great footy, and you know we're professional enough to to do the right things to get us right for the next one. But um, I'm not saying we don't need a break because, yeah, I'm pretty banged up. <laughs> Fair enough. How do you how do you stop complacency, mate? Like uh, we hear a lot about the honesty within the players themselves, but four consecutive titles. You look around the world, some of the greatest sides in the world can't do that. So how do you stop that complacency, that big-headedness? There must be something you're doing. Um, yeah, like I said, you, you probably can't put it down to one thing, but I think it's just um, what's gone before sort of sets the standard for, for what lies ahead. And um, that's the way sort of Ray's always approached each year. And He's always given us new challenges, which is, um, you know, just creates that that movement forward and, and wanting to, to do something again and, and um, be part of an even more special legacy. And uh, yeah, it's, it's just this awesome environment to be with, and uh, they just give us so much in terms of what we need as rugby players to just go out there and have fun. 
I mean, we just looked at some footage there. I mean, it's been a tough competition for you guys, but there's been moments in a lot of the games, and again in the weekend, where you know everyone's sitting at home thinking, oh, finally someone's going to get over the, the Crusaders, but then you win big moments. How does, how do, how does that happen? You, you must sit there and sort of just laugh at it now after seeing you know, the weekend, thinking, man, these guys, you know, we can go to another level. How does it happen? Yeah, oh, look, honestly, looking back on Sunday's game, like that was a solid arm wrestle. You know, we were down for most of it, but um, you know, we talk a lot around in this team. The um, you know, 23, there's 23 players in the game um, now, and you know, the old days probably those numbers weren't really utilised. But it just shows how important they are for um, getting a job done. And you know, we weren't up until what the 15 or like with 15 to go or something. So. Um, those boys really came on and made a big impact, and I think um, when they're doing that week in, week out, it gives them confidence as well as us who are out there at the start just to grind away, knowing that you're going to have um, you know, those boys in the higher numbers come on and do a job. Cody, just lastly, is the, if the trophy's good well, it's, it's got its repairs, <laughs> is it travelling? Is it coming with you so JK can take a look at it <laughs> at, at Eden Park just to know what he can't get his hands on? I'm bringing Grace's surfboard. Hey, are you bringing bring the surfboard? Are you, are you going to bring it with us and put it on display? I think the mid is in one piece, but I don't know about the base. <laughs> I think that's still in repairs, but if they can get it up there in fast courier, maybe. I'm not sure. Hey, <laughs> congratulations. You deserve all the accolades. It has been a fantastic season. Some fantastic performances, and as players, you guys have stood up. And thanks very much, as always, for your time. The fact you've come in late as well uh, uh, for Scott Barrett uh, in, in the season as captain, you've done it fantastically. Thanks very much, mate. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Well, plenty for us to discuss and talk about. Uh, he's done a good fantastic job. Yeah. I've done a fantastic job. And you get that responsibility at the Crusaders Mills. That is not easy, given the number of and great players that have had that chance. Yeah, and to jail them like that too. And you've got to remember, this is a totally different competition that he's mentioned. You know, the fact that week in, week out, you've got to be on top of your game. And, you know, like I said, you know, for moments here, the last 10 or so minutes, thinking, you know, oh, yeah, yeah. finally someone's going to, you know, win against the Crusaders. And mm. nah, didn't happen, apart from the, the Hurricanes. I'll tell you what, though, he'll be part of the North-South game, which is coming up in a couple of weeks. And we've brought our southern correspondent up north. He couldn't wait to get back in studio. There he is, Joey Wheeler. He oh, is there. Right. He adds oh, with us. Seems... We'll talk to him a little bit later on. But later on in the show, make sure you stay with us. We look at a former Blues player who has made an inspirational recovery, Matt Johnson. As, at first, I thought I couldn't walk. I was like, I was like am I you know, paralysed? That's how I felt when I woke up. I really couldn't move like anything. That was real scary. Now Perinara goes for a bit of a dash. Off it goes to Garden Bash up. Umanga Jensen for Hurson. Got it back to Umanga Jensen. And that is another brilliant try. Passes it behind the screen. Mauna absolutely, well, they tried to clobber him, but he got away from Tompkinson. Now good shoot. Try to step. Pops a brilliant ball away. Jordan! John Bridge! That's how quick they can hurt you. And they spread it wide, and here's a bit of a gap. Oh, what an upload from Luke Those were your two game changers this week. Head to facebook.com forward slash two degrees to vote for your pick. We'll name the winner in the build up to the Hur Islanders and the Hurricanes that match on Saturday. Up for grabs 12 months of two degrees mobile and broadband, a Samsung phone, plus a field replica Super Rugby jersey from your favourite team. Of course, this is the last weekend of Super Rugby Aotearoa. Next Tuesday, guess what? They're going to name a North South team. Two teams going to go head to head. That means we've got to get in first because that's what we like to do here. I have we've got to have complaint. our say. Make sure Foxy and the team. I have uh, a complaint. Oh, you've always got a complaint. Where's what? your swan dry, mate? What are you doing with an Auckland jacket on? <laughs> when you come to Auckland, you can't like an Aucklander. You've got to bring that swan dry you wear all the time. They won the, like, the, the team wear. Hey, 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 hey,
Do you know when people meet you, they're like, oh, what a guy. Just take Great it easy. Before we get into, hey, just before we get into it quickly, <laughs> expectations. Our expectations, gentlemen, going into this, are we picking on form or is this an all-black trial? How are you looking at it, JK? Well, I think it's both. So you must pick on form. And then the extra interesting thing is that it's an all-black trial. If they make it an all-black trial and arrest people, it'll degrade the north-south. So it's on form and then the all-black jersey's up for grabs. So you're, you know, it's mate against mate. So that's what's happening here. Um, for you, Joey, I can't let you... You'll have some sort of moment from the weekend. You've been on that show kickoff for a long time, so you'll come <laughs> up with something random, as always. What was your moment from the previous well, weekend? I, I, you guys always overlook the greatest competition in the world, according to Rob Kafer. <laughs> right. <laughs> Super Rugby <laughs> AU. And one great moment that came out of that was a, a slightly comedic wedgie. Um, now, it was probably a sort of an R13 version, not quite the Hopoade that we saw in the league, but to get his mate off or the teammate away from this guy trying to throw a couple, he just pulled up the old Dax and uh, went for it. Sort of maybe a bit of a throwback for you, JK, of um, a movie from your time that you might remember. Was it black and white, this movie? Well, yeah, probably, if, J if JK's here. The Bill and Ted's bogus journey. Now, oh, this wedgie, yeah, yeah, yeah. this wedgie is the ultimate of all wedgies. And this is probably something that I, I'd think you would have done to a couple of Auckland teammates. Initiation, no. hung them up on the coat hanger, or no. you would have got them done. That's what you guys do down shop. south. In Auckland, we wear G-strings. Natural! Are you serious? Are you serious? Oh. 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 I don't want to go near Wahi, mate. All black versus oh, all black. <laughs> <laughs> all black versus all black. As spotlight is on the North and South game coming up on the 29th of August. Let's focus on some rugby now. Let's focus on the South. And this is where we come into our expertise. This is and what we like. The tight I'm, five, Joey. Run me through it. One thing I can assure you, none of these blokes will be wearing G-strings. <laughs> I can assure you. You never, never know, mate. Do not <laughs> like hey, that. Hey, no. stay out of it. <laughs> the best thing about this tight five... Is, there's just it's all it's three crusaders and just a little bit of you know the others that, that complement them. Bring the razzle dazzle. What I've loved about these guys this season, Tyrell's gone from strength to strength. Putty Putty's gone from strength to strength. They've grown their games around that physicality, their set piece. They're doing the simple things really well, and and the rest of them are world class. This How's is where the, the North South line up been going, by this the way, Joe. Yeah, but that's why we have got Putty Putty in. Putty Putty oh, okay. just walks in. He's two injured, meters by four. He's injured. He's not eyes. injured. He walks no, he the plays, he's he's in the no, He plays South, injured. Jake. It's not like up here. They play. <laughs> they continue to play. Middle row. Here we go with the loose forwards and the inside backs. And you look about this. Wow. And look, there's no doubt we've had to find... Frizzell's been in unbelievable form, Shannon Frizzell. But I'm going to talk about Tom Christie, because he's a guy who spent the uh, first couple of games of Super Rugby Aotearoa on the sidelines. Billy Harmon was playing, but Christie, for me, has stood up in his combination with Sanders. We're talking abrasive. That's what we're talking here, Joey. Well, you think you probably got the luxury of him or Dylan Hunt. Probably the same ilk. He probably gives you a little bit more on the ball carry. Um, pretty physical on his tackle. Dylan Hunt, just a real workhorse. Might have a hairline like a 40-year-old, but, geez, he gets around the field like that, that youth and exuberism. It's his first... Dylan sort of... Hunt made 17 tackles before the 50th minute And that's minute how good this weekend. guy is. But this is his first season in Super Rugby, we've got to remember, and he's been like a seasoned vet the way he's been playing. He's been exceptional. I mean, albeit behind a, an all-black type five, it's, it's not too hard to, to shine, yeah. but I think he's doing all the, all the right things. Then How'd you steal the Sniff Chiveler, the Snivler halfback? Snivelling halfbacks. Well, the Brad Weber and well, Wyatt. Well, Brad was south. Otago. He learned down in Dunedin. That's where he started. That was his opportunity. That got him going. And all of a sudden, he learned his trade. But it's like all the rest of this panel turncoat, you know? Yeah, oh. Come down, learn their craft down south, and then turn hey. the coat and come up here, mate. I, I didn't help anyone up here with my rugby. <laughs> uh, definitely not my coaching. But if you talk about Mwanga and the impact he is having, outstanding on the game. We know how good he is. The fact that at the moment, you would have to argue the very best rugby player in the world. And so you combine him with what they've got outside him. Now, yes, when you've got in the north, and it's going to be Bowden Barrett, he's going to be part of that selection, but... How do you know? You haven't picked it yet, man, Mills. Well, you, well yeah, if you, you're not going to pick Bowden Barrett? I'll yes. tell you what, you're going to pick <laughs> Bowden Barrett. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'm going to like what Richie Mwanga is doing because I don't think we've seen any better for a long time, Joey. Well, to me, he's always involved in those key moments in the game, and he's... He's right in the thick of it. He's the guy that they go to for the Crusaders. He sets up all their key plays. He's involved in We saw him creating... We know, we know. Move on. He's brilliant. World class. 
Oh, so let's go and have a look. And, and so we'll just have a look at the back line. The rest of the back line, the outside backs. And, oh, three more Crusaders. You know, that's what's going to happen. Four more Crusaders, actually. And Jordy Barrett, the, the best fullback in the world right now. So I'll tell you what, for the South, you know, Will Jordan has been in great form, playing some of his fantastic footy. And then you look at Enor and Goodhue and George Bridge, outstanding in 2019. But Jordy Barrett, for me, if you think about that, that combination, how they're going to work together, him and Richie Mwanga. You know, Barrett's game, his form, uh, his, I think his leadership qualities now as a group, as a team, Joey, this is exactly what they were waiting for, someone like this to step up, and the South are loaded, absolutely loaded with talent. The thing I love about Geordie Barrett is his mentality. He's, he's got a Southern mentality, Southern mentality. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's from the but Nicky, what he's, But what he's, what he's done for this Hurricane team, he's been an absolute beast. So, came back from injury. He's been the catalyst for turning that Hurricanes team around with everything he does. Physicality and attack and on defence. Huge boot. Um, just playing the best footy of his career at the moment. And I'm so glad he's got a South jersey on going up against his brother. It's going to be brilliant. Brilliant. Do you think, here's a question for you, Goldie. Do you think the, with the All Black influence they'll try and get him to play a two-pivot game? Possibly. Probably don't need to. The fact there's influence <laughs> on the game... Uh, the way that he's playing. Here's the squad if you look at it. This is our squad, Joey, yours and I's. Uh, when we get in this, look, mind you, this is not the All Black Selector squad. <laughs> you know, this is maybe not what they're going to pick, but going from what we've seen, the form these players have shown, they may have some subtle changes, but hopefully we've chewed up enough time so you guys have got nothing to talk about on <laughs> the North. There's a chink in there, mate. But here you go. There's, there's, there's a, a weakness. Mill there's a chink in our armour. I've just said here quite hard because there's a weakness in there. No chink. You, you run away with it. You come on. The North. I don't know how Moana made it. I'm... Oh, it's going to I'll tell you what, the week, the week does. Look at this. Look at oh, this. yes. Okay. See, offer, mate, he's going to walk onto the Eden Park with the car behind you know, him. He's like up against been... Joe Moody, you know that. <laughs> he's not bad. Yeah, no, mate, the, this guy is the most informed prop and the most improved rugby player I've seen in the last 24 months. He is absolutely unbelievable. Patrick Tuopolotu in front of the crowd mills, in front of the home crowd, oh, in man. front of the north mate, crowd. You're inspiring me, mate. You're inspiring me. And then you've got <laughs> Kelly Toyoti and Ross. Look at Ross up there as well. I mean, he's a workhorse, yeah. you know, and that's what I like. Yeah, okay, okay. They haven't got that sort of Blues you know, jumper that experience on. that perhaps <laughs> they haven't got a red jumper. Is that what you're got? saying? They but got what they've got, on. look at that. That's mobility. So when you look at it from a coach's point of view, what sort of game plan are you going to be playing? Well, right around around hey, okay. hey, and it's it's August. It's August in Auckland. It's going to be a nice sunny hot day. You're not going to be doing scrums and lineouts. You're going to be moving the ball around. Talking, and these guys. Oh, got if you're talking loud and fast, scrums are overrated. Game, but the scrums and lineouts when you're the game. Come on, when you're penalties. Move on. That is a ridiculous thing to say. Scrums and lineouts when you're a game. You forget We're about not going to be scrummaging, mate. Oh, oh, no. oh. <laughs> oh, yes. That is excitement right there, people. <laughs> I would pay double to go and see that. Look at that. However. <laughs> They're however, not going to get any ball. However. <laughs> Start with a Kira. Start with, with a Kira. All right. Start with a Kira. The most improved player with offer in the world at the moment. Uh, working hard, hitting with his shoulder. I've been really impressed. You know, he's, he, he's a guy that creates public attention, Mills, mm. and it's been tough for him. I was really proud of him that he came out and spoke about his mental health, but he's just got down and started working, hitting rucks, tackling. I guess my question for you, Mills, and not for these two South Southerners, is if Hoskins is not right, do we play Dalton and bring him off the bench late? Because if he doesn't play this weekend, you know, you can't throw him into that. No, I think you oh, you've, got, him you've got doubts already. I think I mean, you throw him in there. You've got you're doubts still, already. No, you're that's still what we're him. seeing. You're still that's not a doubt, mate. He's got, got plenty of time. He's got plenty of time. He's been out for a few weeks now. I think he'll be about, about ready. But I think I love that combination. Yeah, Adi Savia, he's been playing oh. off the back of the scrum. They've got nice speed and footwork off the back of the scrum. And they love a tackle. So, again, I go right back to my mobility. If you can get that front foot ball, which I think we can from Offer and Co., Man, these guys here, I mean, look at this. He's got the world's best dummy pass as well. That's what I love about it as well. And then you've got Hoskins to Tutu that will just complement that sort of back three department. I love it. Love Beautiful. it. Beautiful. I'll tell you what, you have hit the jackpot at halfback. Oh, you've hit the jackpot at halfback. Totally on. And, and I'll concede in this, but not to say that uh, Brad Webber's in really good form, but I look at Aaron Smith and how well he's playing for the Highlanders. Yeah. He's going to, all of a sudden, if that four pack can get rolling, it is game on. Bowden, oh, you have what, what is. No, no, no well, it's, we're talking about this over here, <laughs> no, mate. No, 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 you no, can't no, just no, not talk about that. Bowden Barrett. No, no, no. You, you, you put him in at 10. Here's your, here's your back, through, back five. Your back five. And run Ooh. me through. You, you know Mate. what I'm looking forward to seeing the most? Is the two midfielders. 
Yeah. That's that, a combination. Me, I mean, yeah. yeah, that is. If, if I was, don't, don't give if it I was guys. picking the All Blacks, pick those two. But Caleb Clark, I, this is, I think, this young man has showed incredible maturity. Like we said before, Mills went to the sevens, and gained a bit of speed. And I just think that this is an important game for him to put his hand up to the All Black selectors, because the All Black selectors will always go your first year. Let's see how you go against. Yeah, and I think best. that'll be the real test for this outside back three, to be honest, against this experienced back three for the South, because their kicking game and what numbers their, do you defense, have in your back, their, their defensive work might be a little bit shaky. What numbers do you have in your back? Don't talk about the North backs. Island, mate. You know, Richie Mwanga chucking up those big Gary Owens on Eden Park, swirling around, bound to be blowing. And, and we'll not we'll see be how they go. at Eden Park. Now. See how they go nice into that, day. mate. Now, here it is. That is the North. That is the side that is maybe, well, we're thinking the form side from the north that's going to re de defend their territory. This is going to be some sort of game of those. But that is, teams. that is, Look, with, without doubt, no matter who you, who you are, yeah, that is two Joey, all black teams playing Joey, against each other. You're going to do a post-match oh, in here. Hey? You're going to do the post-match yeah. after the north-south from the studio here. In That's your swan carnage dry. That's going on here. The carnage here at Sky. With you. And I've started, started a petition. Oh, I've started, started a petition. petition. What's the petition? I've started a petition for Mills and his family to get Eden Park to drop your chip prices. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. What did you pay for <laughs> Sunday? Drop your chip prices. There's been 44,000 of us eating them. OK, well, the ticket, uh, we've got tickets to give away, as always, to the games this weekend here. Uh, Super Rugby, we shouldn't forget that. Super Rugby LTRO win those double passes, the Highlanders and the Hurricanes, and the Blues and the Crusaders. Email the breakdown at sky.co.nz. Thanks very much, Joey. Our Southern correspondent. <laughs> Southern correspondent. <laughs> Please stay with us. This inspirational story from Matt Johnson, a former Blues player. I started to get fevers. There was a bacteria on my valve. The bacteria was um, spreading to my body. You know, I didn't know how to break it to him. You know, you can't play rugby anymore. At the moment, um, our teams are playing well enough to give any in New Zealand a run for their money. And here it is! Here we go. I caught the mapping. Try time, Melbourne Rebels. Unbelievable tries. And that is absolutely brilliant. Goes straight through. There it is, a little taster of the premium Super Rugby competition in the world, Super Rugby AU, according to some. Won't say who. Uh, D-Day is coming and we can't wait much longer on the whole Trans-Tasman competition decision. Those words from Rugby Australia Chief Executive Rob Clark as they battle to establish a playing calendar to secure a broadcast deal for 2021. Now, along with the existing Bleeders Low and Rugby Championship matches, Rugby Australia has proposed a package that includes new products. Let's have a little taster, see what you like. An eight-team domestic competition, so five Aussie teams plus the potential for teams from Japan and the Pacific Islands, or a trans-Tasman equivalent with five Aussie and five Kiwi teams. Running directly after that, a Super 8 competition, a hard and fast four-week competition featuring the top two teams from Aussie, New Zealand and South Africa, plus one each from Japan and South America. There is more. A three-game State of the Union series similar to Rugby League's hugely successful State of Origin. And a National Club Championship, which is the best of all states. And that's to be played after the state-based competitions have finished. Well, the breakdown reached out to NZR, who are said to be pleased with how things are progressing and the feedback they've received after calling for expressions of interest in a new Super Rugby competition. They're working to an end-of-August deadline and continue to have discussions with Rugby Australia. Now, the Aussies, they're taking this to market in just three weeks' time, and they need New Zealand buy-in. If they don't, they've said they'll go it alone. Can they, and will they? And after a hugely successful Super Rugby Aotearoa competition, should we be, and are we even worried? Not sure we are.
Well, the major talking point with this, Burn is purely and simply about whether or not Super Rugby in its form and can it coexist with Australia and New Zealand, this trans-Tasman competition, whether it's 8 and 10, the preferred model New Zealand rugby has talked about, or what Australia are mentioning there. I want to talk about the stats, pure and simply, about Super Rugby between Australia and New Zealand teams in recent times. And here are the numbers. This is what it looks like in terms of on-field performance. And there it is. And we've got three periods, 2005 to 2009, Australia, this is Australia, won 38% of those games between the two countries, 2010-2014. 49%, they won a couple of titles there through the Waratahs and the Reds. Here's the concerning point. 2015 to 2020, just 19% of their games, less than one in five games, and there, the net point per game difference, 13. 13 points between the two sides. Five Super Rugby titles for New Zealand teams. That is why we've got Rod Kafer on the show. He says that they can, he can stand with anyone in the Australian that can stand and compete with New Zealand right now. Thanks, Kafe. We've waited seven days and look, we, we <laughs> absolutely respect your opinion of the game. But what convinces you that if Australia were to get five Super Rugby teams, they could compete with New Zealand? Well, Goldie, for starters, I didn't say that. I didn't give you a number of the number of teams that I thought was relevant. So, um, but, but what's really interesting for me is where I got right into your heads, didn't I? Like, this, yep. this has really got into you. It seems to be something that you've made a massive deal out of. We've seen our teams, and we know full well, as you, as you rightly described, we've had periods of our time, 49%, as you just alluded to, it means that our teams are as competitive on any given day. That was five years ago. Agreed. Right at the moment, we are absolutely not competitive with the New Zealand teams. I, I, I don't have any issue admitting that. We can, on our day, as I said, beat the odd New Zealand team, but we're not going to do it consistently. And our big point is, wh why do we want to keep doing that? Why should we... Why do we want to keep losing to the New Zealand teams? We recognise that your rugby's fantastic. We need to actually look after ourselves and get our house in order, because it hasn't been in order for some time. So why not focus on ourselves, try to come up with a model that might give us a chance after 19 years to win the Bledisloe Cup back and really stop doing what we've continued to do for so long, which is beat our head against the New Zealand rugby brick wall. Okay, if I disagree, I think we do need to work together, but I believe, and this is a question to you, that by trying to expand the game through professional rugby, you have actually weakened the game across the board. So what we're saying is that when you had three franchises, you were strong. So there's got to be a tiered situation. But do you believe that the growth of the game like that has cost you this, you know, difference in competition? Look, JK, as you well know, there, there's, there's not just a um, high-performance aspect to playing rugby in this country. We, we've got a different model. Everyone knows that. We compete against all of our other sports. So we've got to balance out the, the high performance requirements, which quite clearly may well... You may well come to a conclusion that less teams may well be better, and there's some research around that being done very well by my former teammate Ben Darwin. But equally, that is not... The, the totality of our issue. Our issue is how do we ensure that young players have an opportunity to come into the game and continue to play and to play professionally? How do we spread the game to broader markets so that we can um, create commercial outcomes for the game? How do we ensure that there is enough revenue and spectators within the game in this very competitive landscape that we exist in here in this country? As you, as you well know, um, AFL and NRL have 16 and 18 teams. So to, to, to put young, talented sports people into. In this country, if we've only got three and we've only got recently four and previously we've had five, it creates three, four, five opportunities every year for young kids to come through. So only 20. Our competitors have three, four, five by either 16 or 18. So they can pick up 70, 60, 70, 80 kids every year and the talent can go to those places. So it's not just an argument for us about rugby, it's actually an argument that we need to balance out and compromise with the, the, the totality of the game in this country, which is completely different to the game in your country. OK, I've heard you say you're, you're focused, well, the Australian rugby are focused on taking care of your own backyard. And I suppose a lot of it is there's many aspects. The product, 
and that's probably where I'm coming from. Do you believe you've got the product there to be able to make it attractable to, for, for youngsters, or is it just purely about the revenue coming in to be able to, 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 be able to do that? Mills, it's a, it's a balance between the, the two elements of that. I, I've got no doubts that our game um, has always been stronger with this sort of Anzac alliance in, in terms of the commercial opportunities that the game presents. That creates a bigger market and more interest, and I think everyone's aware of that. But equally, we can't be in an environment where we're going to be able to win, as Goldie just showed and you just showed me, 19% of the matches over the last five years, because that actually is counterproductive. That turns people away from the game. You're, you're somebody who's either playing the game, a young kid, or supporting the game in this country, and you've got a team that can only win 19% of their games against Kiwi opposition, and yet you've got 32 other um, sporting teams, plus soccer, that exist in this country. There's 50 other football teams that you could say, you know what, I might go and support a team that wins more often because that makes me feel a little bit better. They're the sort of challenges that we have in this country that are different to yours. So the commentary that sometimes you may hear, and you've all worked in the media, uh, I'm sure, and you know that these little sound bites that get taken away don't actually reflect the context of a conversation that's far broader. I know you're a big picture thinker and you understand and think about the game deeply and you've worked inside Australian rugby, you've analysed the game and there's no doubt I'm challenging that in any way, shape or form. What I would ask you then is the proposal that Australian rugby have put out, do you see this cross uh, competition bigger picture, South Africa, Australia New Zealand, is that the best way to test yourselves in the long term rather than in direct competition with all of our sides? Would that be a better outcome? Do you like what they've proposed from Australian rugby? In some ways, Goldie, I'd like to turn up on a Bledisloe Cup on a Saturday in, on the afternoon and play the All Blacks at Eden Park and see if we're good enough. That's what I'd like. That's where I think the test really is. It comes down to um, the, the primacy that exists within test match rugby and the Bledisloe Cup for us and for you becomes a, is an important trophy. It's an important part of our DNA. It has that long history since the 1930s um, and, it's, and it's etched in the DNA of rugby in, in both of our countries. And I think that, that for us probably is in some ways certainly the, the, the pinnacle outside the World Cup of, of rugby existence and, and it's an important part of our, of our history. So to me that's probably where the greatest test should come. So from, from our perspective, we need to think about what's going to give the Wallabies the best chance to hoist that beautiful cup. Um, we haven't had it for 19 years. We remember a time in our history when we had it five years in a row, not too long ago, in the late 90s, early 2000s, but way too long ago if you're an Australian. How do we ensure we create a model that gives us the opportunity to get it back? I can tell you what it isn't, and it isn't keep doing what we've done over the last 19 years because that isn't good for either of us. Okay, if the AFL, when you look at it, when you look at all the excuses on marketing, TV rights, worldwide game, it should be dead, and yet it has completely overtaken rugby. Is that mismanagement from the Australian Rugby Union? I, I don't think it's got anything to do with that. You can't draw a parallel between the success of one sport necessarily and, and others. That sport has been... Um, very good. It's, it's held a... It, it, it created a national footprint um, in the sort of, let's call it the, the 90s as the game expanded. It then grew um, with a very strong traditional um, uh, sporting culture that came out of Victoria and then spread through the rest of Australia um, with deep pockets and lots, lots of people playing the game and, and relatively larger television rights revenue and, and, and commercial opportunities than what existed within rugby, it's profited to become the, the, you know, the dominant sport in this country. I don't think it's got anything to do with um, whether the, the management was good in Australian rugby necessarily or not. We've seen periods of time when the management's been very good in Australian rugby and periods of time when it's been poor. That hasn't really impacted the success of um, AFL. Okay, uh, thank you so much for coming on the show. Look, we have great respect for Australian rugby. We, too, hope that the competitiveness comes back between the two nations. We want to see a contest as well, and hopefully you and your team, and particularly Australian rugby, can find a way to get there. And thanks very much for coming in and taking up the challenge, mate. Always love to hear your talking and thoughts on the game. Thanks, gents. Yeah, always love hearing from Kaif and...
absolutely respect where he's coming from, and I think there are some challenges. And he's been inside Australian rugby, Bernie. He understands it, J.K. Mills. I tell you what, there are plenty. There are plenty. You absolutely have to love the passion, don't you? Passion is what's going to be this weekend for the final round of Super Rugby Aotearoa. We cannot wait. Of course, all the action live on Sky Sport. It is going to be an absolute cracker sellout at Eden Park. It's going to be fantastic. Let's finish on a great inspirational story tonight of Matt Johnson. I can hear it. I hear my heartbeat. I feel my heartbeat. I'm grateful for my heart. That heartbeat is now the soundtrack to life for Matt Johnson and partner Taylor. It's beating fast now. What you can hear isn't a television sound effect. It's audible from a couple of metres away. The sound and scar are reminders the 26-year-old almost died two months ago. I started to get fevers. I started to get chills and it would just be like late in the afternoon, sunny day and I was, I was cold. There was a bacteria on my valve the bacteria was um, spreading to my body, my bloodstream, every time my valve would pump blood. And then I was just like, man, like, here we go again. Johns is no stranger to hospitals or heart problems. A childhood cold turned into rheumatic fever and meant he needed surgery to get a new heart valve sourced from pig tissue. Being like a 13-year-old kid, being told I couldn't play rugby or league anymore, and yeah, it was probably one of the darkest years I've had. He was really stubborn because he didn't take no for an answer, you know, not being able to play. His determination to recover meant the centre played first of Dean Rugby at Auckland St Peter's College and eventually signed with Southland in the Mitre 10 Cup. And here's an opportunity for Matthew Johnson sprinting for the corner. Lee closing, Johnson dies early. And that's a good try, very good try. But not long after getting his dream call up to the Blues, the valve leaked. It was tough mentally because I felt like I was there. I, met, I finally felt like I made it and then got, like, you know, another setback. <laughs> Just four months after surgery, he was back playing for Southland. Good job, mate. Fast forward to this year, and Johnson was Pukekohe bound, having signed with Counties Monaco until the fevers struck him down during June lockdown. So I was functioning on 15% blood flow and they were just surprised that I was playing or even just running or just doing any kind of physical activity. He goes, I've been a cardiologist for 15 years and I've never seen this before. And instantly we're like, oh no, what is it? His third heart surgery didn't go to plan. Every minute felt like an hour uh, waiting for him. It got to 1am and the nurse said, the surgeon wants to see you. Um, and I watched too many movies because, you know, every time a surgeon wants to talk to someone, it's usually bad news. And I was like, just tell me straight. He was like, he's probably got a 20% chance of waking up. And that's when I was just like, I didn't lose it there, but when I walked in and saw him, uh, like I just started crying. You know, uh, <laughs> I remember grabbing his hand and it was stone cold. Just thinking about it, like, just little things like, you know, make my stomach sink and, like, see, like, a loved one on the bed like that, open chest and just lifeless, like she said. It's like, I can't imagine what she, what she went through. You know, in that ward, I'd already seen people die um, throughout the week. That was really tough and I was just thinking, you know, that could be Matt. I remember hearing people wailing in the hallways and thinking, like, I hope that's not me soon. That was real scary. Mm. Am I planning a funeral? What am I doing? Like, it was tough. Um, and I was just having a good sleep <laughs> for six days. And for some reason, like, I pulled through. Um, the man upstairs didn't want me. I was holding his hand and I was like, Squeeze my hand if you can hear me. And he squeezed it. And I just, 
I started crying because I couldn't believe that he could hear me. The first thing that I hear or wake up to is like bright lights and Taylor's voice saying, breathe, breathe. Um, and I thought I was breathing, but I was a machine and I needed to get off that machine. That was definitely the best moment of my life. Johnson was alive, but because this time he needed a mechanical valve, his rugby career was over. <laughs> when he was lying there in his coma, <clears throat> and obviously I knew that he had the mechanical valve, and you know I didn't know how to break it to him. You know, you can't play rugby anymore. I didn't cry about it, or you know, um, it's not the end of the world for me. So I still always have like you know. I'll always have that passion for rugby and always want to play, but I'm, I'm all good watching for now. Dude, it's like <laughs> you didn't cry the whole time. <laughs> no. I, uh, when I, the first week I, I cried, I, was, oh. I didn't cry because of rugby, I cried because of all the, the messages and support I got. Yeah. So we've got a meeting next Wednesday night. Johnson wasn't long out of hospital when one of his supporters, County's coach Tyler Veer, called. He offered to keep his rugby dream alive as a defensive coach. Defensively, yeah. he's, he's very astute. Uh, it was a bit of a unanimous decision from the, from the coaching group. So I was quite surprised that he gave me that offer and yeah, it was, I, th I guess it was a sense of relief like I'll still be involved with the game. And him being around us is a, is a reminder that uh, the game is the game, but life is life. Uh, enjoy your time, uh, work hard for each other and have a lot of fun along the way. Johnson's not short on jobs, just two months after surviving surgery. He's also back working as a teacher's aide at St Peter's College. He knew his career could end at any time, so completed a sports and exercise degree in Southland with an eye to eventually becoming a PE teacher. I knew it was, it was going to come, but not this early. So I was, yeah, I'm quite happy that I did get that qualification you know, early while I was playing rugby at the same time, and I could. And Johnson is also keen to educate youngsters on the perils of rheumatic fever, so they don't go through his experiences. Yeah, so if I found out earlier, all of this could have been prevented. After everything he's been through, Matt Johnson just listens to appreciate life. Yeah, he's really resilient, and I've always been really proud of him. The sound of my heartbeat is a constant reminder of how grateful I am and how I need to say yes to every opportunity in life.